Hi, and welcome to the invisible body. My name is Christine. I'm the pastor of the invisible body, and we are a solely online church for those of you who can't make it to real life church, um, or if you just want an extra church experience during your week. That's what we're here for. Today we are going to be talking about death. It's a pretty heavy subject, but something we really need to talk about. The world is currently falling apart around us, really, with um, thousands upon thousands of people dead because of COVID. Um, We have riots going on in America. Ebola has broken out um, in Africa. There are swarms of locusts uh, eating crops. Um, in the Middle East, we there is a lot of death and destruction happening, and we need to be able to talk about it well. We need to be able to address this really heavy topic without fear and without trepidation um, around it. Western society is really bad about talking about death. We are uh, not accustomed to grieving well. We are afraid of death. Um, to the point where there are so many youth potions and elixirs out there because nobody wants to get old and die. They want to preserve their youth as much as humanly possible um, to the point where people go to extreme measures. Our understanding of death um, has several different sources. Uh, So Western society has been um, created out of... uh, Hebrew society, Greek society, um, a lot of mixed philosophies and things have created the way that we understand death. So let's just delve into that a little bit. In the Old Testament, death is final. There is no um, understanding in the Hebrew mind of eternal life, um, apart from the very, very, very few people uh, like Elijah who get taken up to be with God. But death, uh, Sheol, the grave, they're all final. Um, The psalmists talk of who will be able to cry out to you from the grave, O Lord, who will be able to sing your praises, Um, because no one can from the grave. They are cut off from life. They are cut off from God. Death is the end. So for them, the idea of continuing um, eternally is through their descendants, um, their name being passed on. Um, in fact, I, I'm pretty sure it's in, uh, there's a Hebrew saying about there's a first death, which is when you actually die, and your second death is when it's the last time somebody speaks your name. So that's why, again, the psalmists talk a lot about um, you know, the the blessing of children. It's why um, there is so much emphasis on children and um, on barren women are seen as, as pariahs of society because they cannot continue their line. Um, so there's, there's that aspect, which death is final, which is something we see in our understanding of death in the West. Um, and then we have Jesus come into the whole mix. So he comes into it, and he um, is coming into a world that has been influenced by the Hebrew thinking, but also Roman and Greek thinking, which there is the philosophy around dichotomy of body and spirit. So they saw the body matter as kind of evil, it's bad, it's dirty, it's something that will um, decay. So the spirit is pure and holy and beautiful. And um, so that was seen as the eternal aspect of a person and the body is kind of nothing. So Jesus, when he dies and is resurrected, he's not only saying to the Hebrew way of thinking, hey, death has um, been overcome, you can live after death. He's also speaking into the dichotomy way of thinking and saying, no, I am bodily resurrected. Um, My body is good and it is not something that is separate from my soul eternally. They are both eternal things when God resurrects us from the dead. So that's where our thinking is based. But there is some stuff that's happened in between because, you know, that was 2,000 years ago. Stuff happens. Um, And so now we have some uh, ways of thinking where death um, 
is when our bodies go to the ground and then our spirit goes and be with Jesus forever, which is not what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us that we will be resurrected bodily. Now, if there is a time in between, or maybe that time passes so quickly when we're dead we don't notice it, um, where we are with Jesus or we're not with Jesus, I don't know. No one's come back and told us that one. But what Jesus showed us is that we will be resurrected bodily and spiritually so we can't start thinking that our spirit goes and bees in heaven with Jesus while our body stays here. We are hoping for the resurrection of our body and our spirit. Um, then we've got the uh, reverse effect of that which is prosperity gospel which says that well if the body is good and God made it good then those who trust in Jesus won't have any illness they won't have any suffering they will be healed instantly that kind of thing and if you get sick then well you're just not really having enough faith um, so that's the kind of polar opposite and is just as destructive because yes what God made is good but we are in a broken fallen creation and our bodies are part of that and we will suffer and we will die and we don't just have faith and, and never have any problems again so that's kind of where our thinking around death has been created historically so we in the West have all of this influence um, of the way we think about death and so you get people who aren't Christians who view death as final and so is terrifying and then you have Christians who think that it's a spiritual resurrection only and then you have Christians who will say well you, if you're a Christian you shouldn't suffer and all of these things we get all mixed up and we means that we don't talk to people who are suffering and who are sick and who are dying very well so I looked after my mother-in-law while she was dying of breast cancer and she used to rant and rave to me about the number of people who would tell her to just stay positive um, or would give her another elixir that she needs to try um, and who made her feel guilty for not getting better. Or made her feel guilty for accepting the fact that she was dying and for choosing not to do any more treatments. We should not be making dying people feel guilty because of our hang-ups. Like, that just should not be happening. So what um, we need to do is learn to speak about it. Well, we need to comfort those who are dying, uh, not make them feel like they can't actually talk about their experience with us. Hebrews 2, 9 to 15 um, is a great passage, um, which will be down below um, in this link. So please go and read it. Um, and it talks about how Jesus overcame death, but took away our fear of death. We shouldn't be afraid of dying but we shouldn't be afraid of those who are dying as well because there is fear um, because we want to fix it we really do we want to be able to tell people if you take this this and this then it's going to be okay if you just think this it's going to be okay we want to take away their grief and we want to take away their anger and we want to take away their pain and we want to say no it's all going to be fine that is not helpful to their humanity particularly in churches we are not very good at letting people be angry I have talked to a number of people who have terminal illnesses who um, have found that churches are particularly bad at not allowing them to be angry at God for what they're going through um, churches don't like swear words we don't like people to rant and rave we don't want people to get angry um, we want people to turn up to church and be happy because Christ brings joy um, the thing is that in doing that we are telling people that they cannot be honest with their God about how they're feeling our God is big enough to deal with whatever emotion and whatever language we need to use to express what we're going through. He 
created us. He knows what we're feeling. To not express that honestly is just to deny our expression of what we're going through. We have to allow people to be in pain. And we need to learn to deal with that. Because it's not up to the person who's dying to deal with our pain around them dying. We have to deal with theirs. We have to sit and comfort them. So a few, a few uh, tips, tips and tricks. Number one, let's learn from Job's friends in the first instance that they were with Job. When they first turn up, they sit in silence with him. That's it. And then they start speaking, and that's where it all goes wrong. Because they start trying to fix it and explain it and tell Job why it's happening. And God comes down and goes, you're wrong. Um, but first they just sit with him. They sit with him in his pain. In silence. We actually need to learn to do that. It's really uncomfortable. I remember sitting with uh, my mother-in-law and, you know, she's, she's upset or she's in pain. And I want to fix it. I want to tell her how to fix it. It's uncomfortable to sit in silence and to see somebody in pain. And yet we need to do that for them. We need to be loving enough to do that. Number two, don't tell somebody it's all going to be okay. Because it might not be. It might not be. Yes, we have the hope of resurrection and life hereafter and all that, but that's not yet. We are in the now, and right now, it's not okay. We need to stop telling people that it's going to be okay. Thirdly, we need to learn to accept where people are at. Are they angry? Let them be angry. Are they accepting of their death? Then let us accept it with them. Are they um, grieving? Are they sad because they're leaving people behind? Then let us grieve with them. We don't need to fix it. And I keep coming back to that. We do not need to fix it. We have to allow people the space to show their feelings. Number four. Don't shove Jesus down their throat in an inappropriate way. People do not need to be preached at when they're dying. What they need is somebody to show them hope. Now, being preached at and showing hope are very different things. You go in and say to somebody, you're dying, you need to know Jesus. You need to know that he is your Lord and Savior because if you don't, you're going to hell. That's not helpful for where they're at. They may feel attacked, they may feel guilty, they may feel angry. They, It's just not a good way to approach it. Instead, let's say you're going into a hospital room or something with a friend that you know. Say to them, would it be okay if I prayed for you right here, right now? Would it be okay if I lift you up in prayer to my God? Would it be okay if I tell you about the hope that I have for you after death you know like broach it with them and if they say no fine that's okay go home and pray for them in private because God can still work he doesn't need you to go in there and bible bash them until they you know give in or resent it or hate God even more for their circumstances let's not use Jesus as a weapon against those who are dying Let's use him as a comfort. The story is meant to bring comfort, not fear, not pain, comfort. So that's my little talk about death. If you have any further questions, if you want to reach out, I am available for you to message. Um, I am even available for you to Skype or Zoom or whatever you want to do. If you are... Um, Particularly because of the topic we're talking about, if you know someone who is dying and you're struggling and you would like some advice or some guidance or some help um, or some support, I'm here. Please reach out. If you yourself are going through something where you're suffering, you're ill, you're, you're going uh, through a terminal illness and you would like somebody to talk to and to help you, I'm here. 
I am also here for any other reason. Um, prayer request is just to know a little bit more about what we do here. Um, please, please reach out. I am totally available for you. Um, depending on time zones, I may not reply straight away, but I will as soon as I can. You are a wonderful bunch of people. God loves you very much. And you are so welcome at this church. And I hope I will see you next time. Thank you.